Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new season of the Purposeful Life Show with your host, Adrian Starks. I'm excited to share some new updates of the show with you, starting with a new look, sound, and energy, as well as a variety of guests coming aboard with intriguing topics of conversation. I hope you enjoy the new level of energy that will be brought to the show. Thank you for all of your support since the very beginning in 2019. Wow, it's been three years already? (laughs) Because of you, the Purposeful Life Show is now in the top 5% of all podcasts globally, and we aim to get it into the top 1%. Continue listening to the show and share it with others. You can also now listen to the show on my Facebook page at Adrian Starks, where you can comment in real time and communicate with me about your aha moments. Thank you again for all of your support. And let's make this one hell of a year and be purposeful about doing that. Wishing you all much love and success. Hi, my name is Adrian Starks, and welcome to the Purposeful Life Show on the Champion Up Podcast. This podcast is for the courageous creators wanting to create a life of meaning, adventure, and fulfillment, all while helping to make the world a better place. I'm happy you're here, and if you're new to our show, make sure to give us that five-star rating and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Also, connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Champion Up. It is always that one idea that could be your breakthrough. It's time to step into your courage and believe the champion in you. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Purposeful Life Show on the Champion Up Podcast. And I'm your host. My name is Adrian Starks, and I'm very excited to have you here for another special episode. Make sure to go to the App Store, type in the word Champion Up so you can get that free Champion Up app for download. Also, give us a five star and subscribe to the show so that we can give you more powerful content weekly. Today's episode is about the journey of an entrepreneur. And I have an amazing person here today that's going to share that journey with us. And his name is Arnold Smith. And we had Arnold on about a couple of weeks ago to talk about his powerful tools he's been using in the world to help people communicate better. But a little bit about Arnold here. He's an entrepreneur, speaker, writer, and consultant who specializes in behavior transformation. As an entrepreneur, he likes to focus on solving complex problems with simple solutions. His latest project, The Connection App, aims to help busy people stay emotionally connected despite the often unreasonable demands that modern society places on us. And I certainly agree with that. Welcome to the show today, Arnold. Yeah, thanks, Adrian. Good to, good to be here again. Well, it's so great to have you back. And we are excited to learn more about this path of being an entrepreneur because I know that currently there are a lot of people wanting to know, hey, should I keep working my nine to five or should I try to get, you know, build my own business and create and generate my own income? But it's always not that easy just to make that jump or to even start a business. So we're excited to learn today about what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And as we go along with this conversation, Arnold, can you just explain to our audience today a little bit more about what you do? Uh, Sure. So I'm uh, the uh, president and chief visionary for a technology company. We built a platform that um, is designed to help people change their habits by supporting them with technology. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're a That's what I do. I run that company and um, we are uh, one year in, uh, in terms of our incorporation. And, uh, but uh, I've been working on this project probably for about three years now. Okay. So about three years. So that is something that everyone should understand about the duration of certain things and how they come to a particular result. So Arnold, you know, of course you're an amazing entrepreneur. I mean, you're the president of the Connections Apps Inc. company, but what inspired you to want to, to be an entrepreneur? I think that I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I, I, it's, um, I, uh, maybe I just have trouble playing with others, which is <laughs> not really the case, but I, I've always had really good ideas to the point where, you know, my wife, uh, of 13 years, I would share an idea with her and she'd say, that's a great idea. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah. And then I, I wouldn't do anything about it. And then eventually she said, stop sharing ideas with me unless you actually do one, because I think mm. they're all great ideas. And I, you need to do one. And so all my life, I've seen challenges our society faces, you know, challenges with being alive. And I've, I naturally am a problem solver. I love to solve problems. You know, it, uh, I just really couldn't live with myself if I didn't take a chance and, you know, see if one of these ideas actually was good in the real world. Arnold, you know, I love the fact that your wife pushed you to or encouraged you to act out your ideas. 
this is where many people, especially those who are trying to go down the path of being an entrepreneur, get stuck or get lost. They have all these ideas, but they do not try them out. So what are, what do you think are some steps the audience member listening today that's wanting to be an entrepreneur or is maybe having difficulty getting themselves going? What are some steps they can take to begin to build their business? I think the first thing is to really get in touch with what it is that you want to change in the world. And and it okay. could be small or it could be big, big. It might just be, you know, in your office, is there a better way for us to communicate? At, at its core, being an entrepreneur is just simply solving a problem that people have. Mm. And okay. so start solving problems and understand what it takes to do that. And if you do that on a small scale, then you can it will help you build the courage to to take on bigger and bigger challenges. So the first step is learning what you can do to solve problems for someone else to be a person of service. Is that what you're saying, Arnold? I think so. I think the entrepreneur uh, notices what isn't working as well as it could. And it's really easy to find that in your own life. Like, just what are you frustrated with? Mm -hmm. um, what what do you encounter every day that makes you this? Why is this so hard? Why is this difficult? And if you're interested, try and figure out, is there, do I know a solution to that problem? Now, most people are good at solving some problems. And so I think the other step is to figure out, like, what are you good at? Uh, there was a ton of inquiry that I spent in observation of myself about, you know, like, what am I good at? And it was interesting because at first I thought I knew what I was good at, but um, where you want to look instead of what you think you're good at is the results you have in your life. So when you look at your life, what are the results that you're good at creating right now? Ooh, it might yeah. Rather than rather, yeah, rather than going like I want to be able to uh, help corn grow better without pesticides, which is a, a worthy goal. If you're not already good at that, the pathway to making that happen is a long one. So there's a ton of learning you want to do, and if that's what you're passionate about, by all means, dive in and figure that out. And so, but there's things that you're really good at. So, for example, when I looked at my life. And when I created, started creating this company, I looked at, well, you know what? I'm, I actually have a really happy marriage. Like I, I, I felt when I looked around at the people in my life, I thought, you know what? I, I kinda, I'm kind of above average in that area. Like I am so happy <laughs> and my wife is so happy. So this is something that I'm good at. <laughs> and, you know, so I thought, well, what define that? Now, the other thing that I'm really passionate about is just helping people, uh, inspiring people to be happy. In their life, I, I am a very positive person, and I love the idea of taking someone from being in a frustrated or negative state into a positive state of joy. That journey for me—that is—I am—I try and help as many people do that as I can throughout my day. I love that, Arnold. You're saying that to find something that we're good at, then work on giving that to the world or to the marketplaces where there is a need for it. So, for the person listening, Arnold, they may say. I'm going to go ahead and play their side here. Well, that's great. I'm good at a lot of things, but I can't make any money doing it. What would you say to that? Well, and, you know, that may be true. Um, and so there is an, an inquiry about is it possible or how do you make money? Now, the great thing about society today is it is easier to create a business and make money than it ever has been in the past because you can simply make money from a good idea for good information. You know, if you create a website that is focused on, and you know, you can do that for free yourself. You can, you know, get download Wix or something and, and, you know, develop a website that is reasonable and put some good information on that and get some advertising on there. And if you can get people interested in that website, then you can make money off it. So even if it's, you know, how to kick a soccer ball better or how to, uh, you know, the, a better way to tie your shoes, for example, <laughs> you know, like I, I've got this system for helping kids learn which foot to put a shoe on. And there are people Googling that right now. They're Googling, how can I help my kids figure out which shoe goes on which foot? And that, that you, you know, finding those questions, you know, these problems are 
everybody has them. And if you have a website that shows that or a YouTube video, you can get an audience. And when you have an audience, you can make money. So people may think that they need to have a store, but it's actually relatively, I mean, it's easier now than ever before to to monetize your ideas. I agree. Yeah. Uh, so there is lots of opportunity there. I, I agree with you completely on that because that seems to be really a lot of the objections people will have to running a business. Well, I can't make any money and I can't do this. So it's more of excuses than reasons. And it's just a fear that they're allowing to themselves to hide behind. But you are definitely working beyond fear, Arnold, because you're a courageous creator and you're making some amazing things happen. Where were you when the idea of starting your company, the Connections Apps Inc. took place? Do you remember where you were when this idea just like, oh, I'm going to do this company or I'm going to take this route? I don't know if I remember the exact place, I think it's been a real evolution for me. I can I can see a, a time when I was sitting at my former business parties, a business partner's dinner table, mm -hmm. and we were talking about what we were doing. And we were kind of the program that we'd created wasn't going as well as we'd like. And so we were talking about I had some other ideas. And one of the ideas, and I think that that was when I thought, well, what if we did this for a specific niche? Like, I really want to make a difference for couples, because I've been doing this investigation. And I see that that's something I'm good at. And he said, fill your boots, go and do that. That is great. <laughs> I'm not interested in doing that. But go and make it happen. So I was like, okay, Thanks. That's really clear. So I think that there is that moment that it happened. But the idea of making a difference for couples probably started in 2005, where I just really saw, you know, I'd just gotten married and I was so happy. And I thought, man, I just, if people just had an amazing marriage that filled them up each day, it just, you, you launch yourself out the door because it's like you've just, you're filled up with happiness and you just got joy in your heart and you just feel like you're on top of the world. And I wanted that mm -hmm. for everybody. So that was 2005, but I had no idea how to make money from that. <laughs> so that, that's been a journey. And, you know, and that's, you know, beyond that, I had no confidence that I would be able to pull it off. So there was some doubt there, obviously, which one would assume you wouldn't have because you're such a successful person, but even the most successful individuals that are creating businesses to serve a multitude of people have their doubts. And speaking of doubts, on this journey, Arnold, that you have been on, that has been getting much better along the way, and I know you face challenges repeatedly, have you made any mistakes along this journey? And if so, were you frustrated by them? You know, I think that I don't think you can get through a, a day really without making a mistake. But <laughs> that's true. Very true. <laughs> you know, I think that my experience of being uh, an entrepreneur is constantly failing to meet your own expectations and keep going anyway. You know, I have I have I demand a lot. And I think that so many times I stopped doing something because I just thought it just is just not good enough. Like this is like I can't figure out how to get to that place where I know it's really good. And I think that that stopped me for years. And, you know, there's a saying that perfect is the enemy of good. And uh, so often, I think that mostly it just comes down to being afraid. When I really dug in to, it's like, well, this, this isn't good enough and it's going to fail, so I should stop. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to... You have to be good. I had I, I got this advice from some of my mentors who had been very successful in, in their lives and created amazing results. And they gave me some surprising advice about being an entrepreneur working as a consultant. They said, do good work, but don't do great work. Hmm. And I was flabbergasted because I am too right now. <laughs> who were Right? These men who were giving this advice were people who had created amazing results in their lives, you know, worked with conflict resolution between countries, you know, created programs that are all throughout society. And I was just shocked. And they said, because the difference between good and great is about 95% more effort. And most of the time, 99% of the time, the people that you're helping are happy with good. Mm -hmm. Because it's good. You're helping them move things along. 
And the amount of effort it takes to go from good to great is, uh, is there's no way to make money off of that. So I thought, okay, I, I, I really kind of chewed on that for a long time because that was really counter to how I would like to approach things. Where, But then you realize that when you're in startup mode, there are so many things that need to happen. Oh, I concur and if on that. You give, if you aim for excellent or great with all of them, you just simply can't do it. And so either you spend a ton of time developing something that, and then you put it out there and then you've got, and you don't, you, and then now you're, you're behind the eight ball. I mean, this is the whole methodology behind the lean startup, you know, like many of the, the, the tech you know, gurus out there, or that they'll say, if you put a product out there that you're proud of, you did it wrong because you need to get a product out there and get it in the hands of the people that you want to help. And they'll give you the feedback you need to make it better. But if you try and perfect it before you put it out there, A, you may miss the mark. And B, you, uh, you know, you've taught a, a ton of effort and you know, without any kind of knowing of whether people want it at all. And that's part of the perfection, so, right? I, I, that's part of the reason why people don't get things done because they're trying to be perfect. And you mentioned earlier, when I go back on this, perfect, don't aim for perfect or perfection, aim for good. And then don't look mm -hmm. at great, but look at good and getting your product, getting your service out there in the good quality that it is currently. And you'll get the feedback from the people about how to make it better. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I am 100% committed to excellence. Yes. Like I am committed to that in every aspect of my life as a person, around my health, around the products we do. I give 100% to do my absolute best. Mm -hmm. But when you look back at what you created, it's so difficult to get to excellence the first try you know whether it be a headline or an ad copy or you know because there's just you can't know everything and you you rarely have the time to get there now i also i mean i believe you want to strive for that all the time but most of the time you have to settle for good otherwise you just it's it's nearly impossible. And I'm happy to have someone come and show me mm -hmm. how to always be excellent and prove me wrong. I'm just saying that's been my experience in a startup mode. And, you know, I think that there are companies out there who have done, they're on their fourth or the fifth startup. And they have, you know, five million bucks in the bank and they can spend it. And, you know, I agree. I think that they have, uh, they're much better at maybe getting to really good. But even they would say, if you launch a product, you know, like the billionaires say, if you launch a product, you're proud of have you put too much work into it? So, I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a on this journey and I'm learning, but, um, you know, that is to me the biggest stopping point that, you know, for a decade okay. stopped me from, from having my own business was I could never get it good enough. Never get it good enough. I believe Aristotle, one of the great Greek philosophers, indicated that excellence is a habit. So it's something that we do. And once again, excellence comes from just being better and working on the good, but not trying to be perfect. And I totally understand what you're saying with that. And I could see why you are on this journey of consistent progression of success versus people who stop and stagger because they're work they're focusing too much on, is this going to be just right? Is it going to be perfect? So out of all your multiple experiences, what is the number one thing, Arnold, that you feel helped you to stay on the path to a successful business that you have built for yourself and your world? The number one thing. You know, you really have to manage your thoughts and believe in yourself. Okay. You know, there's this great, a great book called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And I love what she talks about around inspiration. Like inspiration is almost like a being that visits you. <laughs> it sees you and you, you're, you're filled up with you. go, Oh my God, that's a great idea. I love that idea. And then you're like, you start taking action and it fills you up and you got all this energy or you don't do anything. And then the inspiration just quietly leaves you. And her premise is that if you get that inspiration and someone has, you know, someone down the street has done almost exactly the same thing, it's your job to follow your inspiration regardless of what's happening in the world. Whether people love it or not, this is what gives you life. This is what gives you the energy is, is really allowing that inspiration to live in your life. And I think that has been, use that to overcome the doubt, to overcome the fear that you your job is to follow your inspiration. And that's your it. job is to follow and your to inspiration. To the best of your ability as much as you can.
to follow your inspiration to our audience listening, follow your inspiration. What really moves you? You know, the word inspire means to take in life, actually, from uh, the context of, I believe, a Latin term. And what really moves you inside is what Arnold's asking here. And will you follow that inspiration? Because if you don't, it's not going to be there forever. <laughs> it's going to just leave. Just imagine someone coming and knocking at your door and you don't come to the door. What do you think is going to happen as they continue to knock and you don't open it? They're going to leave. So if you don't act on your ideas, then your ideas are just like these quick flashes of lightning that only come sporadically. And if you don't act on them, act on that inspiration, then they're going to disappear and you may not get them again. And Arnold has figured out a way to get those ideas rolling, acting on them like his wife helped him to do in the beginning. And so, Arnold, you know, I love the fact that you're such a courageous creator. And that's why I have you on the show, because you are a man, not just of business, but of quality, of integrity, of value, because you really actually care about what you're doing in this world and how to impact people with that to make their lives so much better, which is the reason why I truly believe that you have been so successful with your powerful company and the products that you're creating along this process. But what words of wisdom can you provide to our audience today? Also, let's just say that they're walking into the unknown, a person who wants to start something and they have an idea, they have a hunch, they want to move on it. And they love what they do and they want to create impact in the world, but they just don't know what step to take first? What would be that first step, something simple for them to do, just starting today? You know, I I think the first step is always believing it's possible. You know, why not you? Why not you? Yeah, why not? Why not you? Why not you? And um, and, uh, imperfect action always beats perfect inaction. Okay, can we repeat that again? Because I love that phrase. That was basically that light bulb moment for me. One more time. Imperfect action. Action always beats perfect inaction. So I hope you guys wrote that down and you carry it with you all day today. Arnold just gave us a gem of wisdom here. Excellent. And that is the first step is to believe in yourself and just act. Action is one of the biggest words I think anyone can use in their life personally or business-wise because nothing gets done when with inactivity or being stagnant or just waiting for things to happen. I always like to say this, Arnold. I like to say, don't wait for things to happen. Happen toward things. And when we, mm, yeah, like when that. we happen toward things, as you mentioned, and you've been gracing us with your knowledge today, that don't worry about being perfect. Actually make the mistake, you know, make a constructive mistake that you can learn from and say, okay, maybe that didn't work. Not going to do that one again. Let me just retweak this journey that I'm on here. And so Arnold, I love that what you've been doing with the Connection Apps Inc. because you are a complete example of what happens when one idea takes off, when you act on it. And this is what I believe every entrepreneur should understand in the business world because I think there's a lot of people, they say I'm an entrepreneur, but let's be honest here, I'm gonna say this, a lot of them are not entrepreneurs because they're just, they're not acting out their ideas. They're talking about them, you know, but they're not acting them out continuously. They're not willing to make the mistake. You know, with this Champion Up podcast, I moved on something that I'm good at doing. You know, this wasn't planned two or three years ago. It was like, I thought, hey, I'm good at communicating. I'm good at speaking with people. I love finding out the greatest in people and really helping to bring that to the world so people can see them. Why not a podcast? And that is an action step I took. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I had sat back, as Arnold mentioned, and just said, well, it's got to be perfect. Uh, It's got to be truly, truly excellent because how can I compete or compare out here in this world of podcasters? There's so many. And here's the key. I didn't compete. I didn't compare. I just created. I just acted on it. Mm. That's why Arnold is here today because he's sharing with us how to act out on your ideas as an entrepreneur. And when you're on this journey, you're going to get your butt kicked. (laughs) You're going to get knocked down at times. You're going to hit some road bumps and that's okay. But the idea is to realize that It's a process, ladies and gentlemen. And if you really want to do this, you're going to have to go through that process of it. Arnold, how can our audience get in contact with you to learn more about your business and how you are building it continuously? Yeah, they can reach me at uh, theconnectionapp.com by email info at theconnectionapp.com. And or, you know, if they want to download the uh, one of the apps, the Connection app, they can also reach out through that and uh, connect with on, on social media. Instagram, Facebook. Excellent. And I'm sure that our audience will do that. And I would encourage you all to please go and do that. Go to social media and to follow and to also get the app. Go to the app store, get it today. I have used it and has made some amazing changes in my life because once again, we're not perfect. 
So even people who are successful and doing great things, they still need to be reminded, hey, you need to do a little bit better. So I love the fact that Arnold's app is helping me to be a better communicator in my life. Arnold, I have a courageous creator question I would love to ask you today. All right. Go for it. What does success mean to you? I think success means to me that when I put my head down on the pillow at the end of the day, I can be, um, I have no regrets about my, uh, my life. Now, that's not means I don't make mistakes, but that I've been in action to create the life that I really want. And, you know, I think I'll know, I, I think that it really has to do with how I am, how I am in the world, how I show up. You know, when I'm being playful and joyful and loving, regardless of the circumstances, then I know I'm, I'm successful. That is why you are a courageous creator, Arnold, because of that notion of success and what it means to you, that you're happy with yourself and what you're doing on a daily basis. And you're able to lay your head down at night and really just be appreciative of what you're creating. To our audience listening, Many of you would assume success is something that you reach when you get that goal, you get that object or whatever it may be that you're trying to obtain. That is what we call an achievement. Now, when you get the achievement, what happens next? So success is therefore, I believe as well as an action of what you are doing, what you are embodying and what you are giving out here in the world. And Arnold, I am so happy that you were able to join us again for a another episode here. And I'm just happy for your success. And I want to thank you for being on the show today. Thanks, Adrian. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time and, and way to go on on creating a great podcast to inspire people. You know, each of us, I just think that we need more people like you in the world. And if we do that, then, you know, you never know that one person that's that's going to hear your message and it's going to change things for them forever. So way to go on your, on your effort. Thank you, Arnold. For that, I really appreciate it. And to our audience today, I encourage you all to be that courageous creator in your life. This is the Purposeful Life Show and the Champion of Podcasts with myself, Adrian Starks. And thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed our podcast today, don't forget to give us that five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on the powerful life-changing content on future episodes. Also, make sure to go to championup.net for even more life-changing content. Until then, I encourage you to be the courageous creator in your life.